GPT-5 is by far the most anticipated AI model in history. So when is it going to be released? How good will it be? And how exactly will GPT-5 change the world? My name is David Andre and in this video I'm gonna answer all of that and more. First off, why am I even talking about GPT-5 when GPT-4 was released a month ago? Well, what you might not know is that GPT-4 was actually finished a year ago. But of course, it wasn't released to the public. It was only released to certain individuals, like Bill Gates. I'm very of the first instance of GPT-4 outside of OpenAI was actually to you. This means that GPT-5 is already likely in the works and what's crazy is that it even might already exist. Now to really understand the importance of GPT-5, let's look how good GPT-4 was compared to the previous model. To put it simply, GPT-4 was insanely better than GPT-3. While the previous model, GPT-3, could only understand text, GPT-4 is multimodal, meaning it can even understand images, as you can see from this clip. From hand-drawn, beautiful art, if I do say so myself, to working website. Also, the context window doubled from GPT-3 to GPT-4, meaning you can give it double the words, and that's just the basic version of GPT-4. The advanced version, the 32,000 token, is another 4x improvement, meaning in total, GPT-4 is eight times better at the amount of text you can give it than GPT-3, which is huge. GPT-4 can also pass the bar exam with 90% success rate and plenty of other tests with 99% of success, which is already better than most humans can. But perhaps the craziest part about GPT-4 is what Microsoft thinks of this. The official Microsoft research team described GPT-4 as representing the first sparks of AGI, which stands for Artificial General Intelligence, aka an AI that can do anything a human can. What's interesting is that there are already rumors that GPT-5 is being trained on over 25 thousand GPUs from Nvidia, which is estimated to be over 200 million dollars worth of hardware. Another fun fact is that you, the person watching, are likely training GPT-5 right now, assuming you're using ChatGPT, because OpenAI has publicly stated that they will use and are using the messages from ChatGPT to train future models, which, you know, in this case is GPT-5. So just be careful what you're asking ChatGPT to do. It might change the future of AI. And if you're finding this valuable, then please subscribe. If I get to 1000 subscribers, I can monetize my channel and that would help a lot. Thanks. Now what could GPT-5 look like? What emerging properties could it have? If the current pattern of doubling the token window continues, it could mean that GPT-5 would have anywhere between 64,000 tokens on the low end and 256,000 tokens on the high end. This means that GPT-5 could easily write entire novels in a single prompt. Think about that for a second. GPT-5 will also likely be able to hold longer conversations that are more nuanced and more specific. You know, ChatGPT, which runs on GPT-4 right now, it tends to forget stuff after a while because the token window is so short. But with GPT-5, that won't be the case. It is also possible that GPT-5 will not only understand text and images, but also audio and video. So you could tell it, create a video about a cat running on the street, and it will do that. Or you could give it an audio sample of your own voice and tell it to put that into the voice of Ed Sheeran, Drake, Eminem, anyone really. GPT-5 could also have better fact-checking and real-time information. While ChatGPT is stuck in September of 2021, GPT-5 could potentially be connected to the internet, meaning you could ask it about the news, you could ask it about the most recent info, which would be an absolute game-changer. There's also the possibility of personalization, meaning you could have GPT-5 that is more passive or more honest or more creative, you know, or more philosophical. Anyone could have their own version of GPT-5. Well, you know, that's not really possible with ChatGPT right now. All of these improvements inevitably mean that GPT-5 will replace a lot of jobs. And by a lot, I mean hundreds of millions of jobs. Especially anything that's software related, like, you know, the knowledge workers, programmers, writers, journalists, those type of jobs. It is also very likely that GPT-5 will be able to pass the Turing test, which would be a massive historical breakthrough. Something that we've been unable to do for the past 80 years. This could lead GPT-5 to making new scientific discoveries completely on its own, which sparks the question, how many parameters will GPT-5 have? Well, let's look at the previous models. GPT-3 had 175 billion parameters. GPT-4 likely has over a trillion parameters. Well, we don't know the exact number because 
OpenAI keeps that a secret, but it's like an 8x from GPT-3. So if we apply another 8x to GPT-5, we're looking at nearly 10 trillion parameters and people don't realize what that means. Okay, so how exactly is OpenAI planning on creating an even better AI? What do they need to do to step it up one level more? Well, I think the key is data. The question is, where will OpenAI get that data from? One rumor is that OpenAI might be planning to scrape YouTube, podcasts, and other content platforms to gather even more data. But OpenAI isn't interested in just any kind of data. It needs diverse quality data. Because the better data the models have, the smarter they become. Now, why is that? Well, let me give you a simple example. Let's say you have two people of the same intellect. They're completely identical in all aspects. But the first person only gets to read the worst rated books on Amazon, while the second person only reads the highest rated books. After they're done reading, you will have an idiot and a genius. That's exactly why AI models need great data to be trained on. It is speculated that Microsoft might have access to more powerful GPUs for GPT-5's training. Maybe something even more powerful than Nvidia's H100s, which are already insane. A single H100 will set you back $40,000, but you can't just buy a single H100. Nvidia only sells them in a package of 8. So at minimum, you have to drop 320k for one 8 module of H100. That's why training new AI models is so expensive. Now, OpenAI clearly doesn't have any issues when it comes to increasing the amount of parameters that AI models have. But right now, the bottleneck isn't parameter count. It is data. And getting more data might prove to be a serious challenge. You know, a lot of experts have been predicting that OpenAI might soon run out of high quality data. One research paper even predicts that this could happen between 2023, which is now, and 2027. Now, if you've ever wondered how much text data there actually is, well, the best estimates range between 4.6 and 17 trillion words. That's how much text there is on the internet. However, getting that text is proving to be much more controversial than OpenAI thought. You know, there is a slight issue with Google and OpenAI. Neither of these companies have stated where exactly are they getting this data from. And if you think for just a few seconds, it's pretty obvious. You know, we can look at other AI companies, like the ones generating images, Midjourney, Stability AI. These companies are currently facing massive lawsuits because they scrape the internet for images from artists, photographers without their permission. And, you know, the question is, whether that's even legal. Now, of course, getting text isn't much different than getting images. So it is likely that OpenAI and Google are doing the same. They're probably scraping Wikipedia, Twitter, Reddit, all of these sites illegally, or at least without their permission, for all this data, you know, which they're getting for free, which is a pretty good deal for them. But I've already seen some articles. It was the Reddit CEO, really pissed at OpenAI, and he said that he will charge them if they ever use Reddit's data again in the future. Now, Elon, who runs Twitter, has completely disallowed OpenAI from training their future models on Twitter data, which might be indicative of OpenAI's future in terms of how hard it will be to actually get good quality data. But this isn't just speculation. In Europe, OpenAI is already being sued by the European Union for illegally gathering data, which goes against the GDPR laws, privacy and stuff. Now, I think this won't be a big issue since, you know, OpenAI is basically owned and backed by Microsoft and Microsoft has some very deep pockets. All right, so when is GDPR? GPT-5 going to be released? Well, according to one website, GPT-4.5, you know, which is a stepping stone, might be coming this September, which is just like four months away. That's crazy. Dude, time is flying by. What? Four months? Anyway, another blog post suggests that the release of GPT-5 will be by the end 2024 or in early 2025. Then there is another AI expert on Twitter who claimed that GPT-5 will be finished later this year, you know, in December of 2023, and it could potentially be released in mid-2024. Now, earlier this year, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI, which caused a lot of people to speculate how much influence does Microsoft actually have. And a lot of people think that Microsoft will actually be pushing OpenAI to release AI sooner, to release their new models with less testing, you know, less training than they did in the past. So we might actually see GPT-5 sooner than we think. Now, after going over all of these predictions, I think the most likely is that we'll see GPT-5 in the middle of 2024, which means roughly a year from now. Let's quickly look at the most extreme scenario. What could GPT-5 be if it was insanely good? Well, maybe GPT-5 could develop a form of consciousness. You know, 
people have been speculating about consciousness in AI for a long time. Just last year, there was a Google employee that quit and said that Google's AI is already conscious. But personally, I think there's no way that's the case. Just try using Bart for a second. <laughs> You'll see what I mean. Another massive breakthrough would be if GPT-5 could learn and improve itself by its own. This would essentially lead to the singularity, where AI progress happens so fast that even the best, most knowledgeable humans have no way of keeping up with it. And GPT-5 could very possibly lead us there. And even with the most conservative and safe predictions, if we look at GPT-4 and how good it is right now, it's able to do most tasks better than most humans. So GPT-5 will most likely be better than 99% of humans at 99% of things, which means a lot of people are losing their jobs. I think David Shapiro said it the best. Things are about to get real silly in the AI field. The progress is only getting faster and more unpredictable. And by definition, unpredictable means that we are less and less able to predict what's gonna happen and how fast it's gonna happen. Now, if you don't want to be left behind, then I highly recommend you subscribe because I'll be covering all of the important developments in the AI field.